This is Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning in for the first time, what I do on Film Bookcast, I discuss the latest film and TV show news. I also review an in theater film sometimes. You can find more about Film Bookcast on film book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's Let's jump right into it this week. This week in movie news, following its announcement, the first official casting announcement for the... The first official casting information for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes has been released. Ika Darville is set to star in the film. The role is yet unknown, but he's best known for his role in the Marvel and Netflix series Jessica Jones, where he appeared as Jones' best friend, Malcolm. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will be written by Josh Friedman, Rick Jaffa, and Amanda Silver. It's one of the most iconic and storied science fiction franchises in film history, as well as being an indelible part of our studio's legacy, said 20th Century Studio President Steve Ashbill. With Kingdom, we're, we're privileged to continue the series' tradition of imaginative, thought-provoking cinema, and we can't wait to share Wes's extraordinary vision for this new chapter with audiences in 2024. We'll be sure to keep up with news regarding Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes as they begin to film, and probably we'll be announcing more cast members. Another piece of interest movie news. According to Deadline this week, Francis Ford Coppola has finally finished the casting process for his long in development epic drama Megalopolis. Production is expected to begin filming this fall in Georgia and rounding out the all-star cast are Dustin Hoffman, Isabel Kuzman, D.B. Sweeney, Chloe Fineman, and newcomer Bailey I. They'll be joining Adam Driver, Forrest Winokur, John Voight, Shia LaBeouf, and so many others on Francis Ford Coppola's passion project Megalopolis. The fate of Rome haunts a modern world. Unable to solve its social problems in this epic story of political ambition, genius, and dangerous love. We'll keep up with news about Megalopolis, but very exciting news. I don't know when the last movie Dustin Hoffman was in, but I'm excited. Rounding out this week in movie news, the Walking Dead, a Walking Dead fan favorite, Norman Reedus, has officially signed on for his first movie project in five years. It's a new Regency forthcoming drama titled The Bike Riders. He'll join Jody Comer, Tom Hardy, and Austin Butler. It's inspired by Danny. Lyon's 1967 photography book of the same name. It's an original story that takes place in the 60s. Seen through the lives of its members, the club evolves over the course of a decade from a gathering place of local outsiders into a more sinister gang, threatening the original group's unique way of life. It'll be directed by Jeff Nichols, and we'll keep up with news about the bike riders, but exciting news for fans of Norman Reedus. That's it for movie news from this week. This week in TV news, the HBO Max series Velma, an adult animated comedy series telling the origin story of Velma Dinkley, the unsung and underappreciated brains of the Scooby-Doo mystery gang that was announced earlier this month, was announced earlier this year, was announced last year, and The Hollywood Reporter reported this week that it rounded out its cast with Glenn Howardin, Sam Richardson, Constance Wu, all joining the voice of Velma, which is Mindy Kaling, which is Mindy Kaling. Jane Lynch, Wanda Sykes, Russell Peters, Melissa Fumero, Stephen Root, Gary Cole are just a few of the many, many cast members that round out Velma. No official release date yet, but we'll, cu- we'll keep up with news about Velma, as it's probably going to debut on HBO Max next year. Some more TV news. The Dune prequel series, Dune the Sisterhood, is still underway at HBO. Recently, it added Emily Watson and Shirley Henderson to its cast, according to Variety. The two actors have joined the project as some of the first cast members for the series since it was confirmed to be in development in 2019. According to the report, Watson will play Vila Harkonnen, while Henderson will play Tula, the two sisters who rise to power in the Sisterhood, a secret organization in the world of Dune, but eventually goes on to become the Bene Gesserit. We'll keep up with news about Dune the Sisterhood. There's no release date yet, but I'm sure we'll have much more news in the coming months. Lastly, this week in TV news, did anybody even want a sequel to Frasier? The massively successful Frasier series, which originally ran from 1993 to 2004, is developing a spin-off. Originally announced to be in development back in February of 2021, the series has now received an official series order and is, and is rumored to be 10 episodes in length. It will follow Frasier's next chapter in a different city. 
reportedly Seattle. The legacy Frasier characters are not expected to appear regularly in the show, instead occasionally appearing in guest roles. Chris Harris and Joe Cristalli is set to write the series. We'll keep up with news about the Frasier sequel series. My mother was a big fan of the original Frasier, but I'm not too sure how hot a sequel of Frasier will be. We'll keep up with news about it. That's it for TV news from this week. This week in DVD home releases is Dead for a Dollar. In this high-energy western, the scene is set in New Mexico at the turn of the 20th century. We meet Max Borland, who, who's hired to find the wife of a businessman held hostage in Mexico. It's later shown that his wife escaped her abusive husband to live with a hostage taker. While on the journey, Max also faced an outlaw who he had to capture years ago. Will he have what it takes to make it out of this adventure alive and save the day for all involved? Dead for a Dollar is now available on DVD. DC League of Super Pets is now available on DVD. Crypto the Superdog has the best life a dog could ask for fighting side by side with the world's greatest superheroes and his personal best friend, Superman. But now he's gone. Superman and his human super friends have been taken away by a mega threat. Now Crypto has to take it upon himself to unite the world's most elite pets to rescue the Justice League and maybe even the world. Will his ragtag furball team be up for the challenge as he is? DC League of Super Pets is now available on DVD. Watcher is now available on DVD. A mysterious thriller follows a serial killer who is known for stalking the city to look for his next victim. A young actress moves to the area to live with her boyfriend and notices that she keeps seeing a man watching her in the neighborhood. The more she tries to solve the mystery of the man peering at her from across the street, the more she finds that she has to protect her safety at all costs. Watcher is now available on DVD. That's it for home releases from this week. Now let's check out some movie trailers from this week. The official trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie dropped this week, and it's in theaters April 7th. We get a good look at Chris Pratt's Mario. And I don't know about you, but Mario is one of my favorite games growing up, and to see it on screen, in the big screen, is very exciting. It's going to be... I'm not sure how good this is going to work as a movie, but it's going to be a fun ride in any case. Check out the trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie. It'll debut in theaters next spring. Another movie trailer that debuted this this week the first teen wolf movie spin-off trailer debuted this week starring tyler posey and crystal reed tyler hoshland it's coming to paramount plus the new trailer gives us a better glimpse at the evil that'll bring them all back it's going to set us up for the upcoming spin-off show the wolf pack check out the trailer for teen wolf it'll debut on paramount plus january 26th the last movie trailer we'll talk about this week, who doesn't want to travel through dreams and nightmares with Jason Momoa? He's starring in Netflix's latest film adaptation of Little Nemo in Slumberland. The title of the film is Slumberland, and it tells a story of Flip, an eccentric outlaw on a mission to help a little girl named Nemo travel through her dreams and nightmares to reunite her with her late father. It's directed by Francis Lawrence. Check out the trailer for Slumberland. It'll debut on Netflix November 18th. That's it for movie trailers from this week. This week in TV trailers, HBO has dropped the official trailer for the highly anticipated second season of The White Lotus. It's scheduled to return it's scheduled to return October 30th, and the trailer welcomes us to the resort's luxurious branch in Sicily, Italy. It also gives us our first glimpse of the issues that will transpire among the series' new set of chaotic guests. Check out the trailer for the second season of The White Lotus. It'll debut on HBO October 30th. Another trailer that debuted this week is season three of His Dark Materials. It's debuting December 5th on HBO Max, and check out the trailer, it looks crazy. The last TV trailer we'll talk about this week, coming in 2023 to AMC Plus, is a new series titled Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches. It stars Alexandra Daddario, Harry Hamlin, Jack Jack Huston, and Togai Sharisa, streaming exclusively on AMC Plus. It'll premiere January 5th of next year with two episodes available that same night. Subsequent episodes will roll out every week, and it's based on the best-selling trilogy, Lives of the Mayfair Witches. It's going to be an eight-episode series, focusing on a young, intuitive neurosurgeon, Dr. Rowan Fielding, who discovers that she's the unlikely heir to a family of witches. As she grapples with her newfound power, she must contend with a sinister presence that has haunted her family for generations. Check out the trailer for Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches. It'll debut on AMC Plus January 5th. That's it for TV trailer. All right. Time for this week's movie review. For this week's movie review, we're checking out Blonde, directed by Andrew Dominic, written by Andrew Dominic. It stars Anna de Armas as Marilyn and Adrian Brody as Arthur Miller. You got Bobby Carnival in there, Xavier Samuel. No wonder why it's such a 
divisive film in that the the ratings and the and the reviews and everything it's it's either you love it or you hate it. Unfortunately, that's kind of well, you know Netflix's whole business model. But you know this isn't the first Marilyn Monroe movie that we've gotten, and I doubt it'll be the last uh, Marilyn movie that we'll get. But Anna. And particularly what Andrew focuses on in Blonde made me uncomfortable for most of the film. And, I, and I've never really watched a film that gave me anxiety to the point that Blonde did. Because it, it, it focuses on really acutely consequential moments in her life. You know, and I, and I, wish, that it, I wish the story kind of went different direction. A little bit. I, I know what the movie was about going into it, but really, it's a it's a tragic movie. You know, it's a, she lived a tragic life. You know, Anna de Armas does a very powerful job bringing you into the psychology of Marilyn because I think Anna does a great job showing you the human consequence of all this. You know, it shows you the 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 consequence in a in a human psyche. You know, and and Marilyn came up in a in a time where you know. The more she did, the more they used her for. And it took her, and Anna does a great job showing you Marilyn's desire to really be an actor, you know, and, and be the true artist that she always was. For, you know, the popular culture at the time, you know, her looks didn't allow for men to understand that, you know, she's a, she's a powerful force. You know, it's not just her looks. Her looks were the exterior to an inner beauty. And I think Anna does a great job bringing that out. That's one aspect of the film that I don't think is really divisive at all. I think Anna Anna does a fantastic job bringing out the nuances, you know, the pain, the 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 real determination that Marilyn had from time to time to really put her foot down in her life. Adrian Brody does a great job pl- playing Arthur Miller. It's an interesting role for him. Bobby Cannavale is awesome in it. Sarah Paxton plays a character titled Miss Flynn. Uh, she does a really good job. Xavier Samuel does a really good job. You know, but it, it really does... I think why it made me so uncomfortable is just because I didn't really know a lot of Marilyn's life. I didn't know a lot of Marilyn's life going into Blonde. I knew certain things about her growing up and certain things about her breaking into the industry, but I didn't know, you know, just how uncomfortable she was a lot of the time, you know, and that makes me uncomfortable, you know, watching a movie about her because we see her you know in the freeze frames or the photos and the or the or we know about her through the affairs or whatever but really you know she was a brilliant woman a talented artist and a great actor who you know never found her comfort and it, it's it's uncomfortable to see that you know that you can be that good and that talented and that um successful but still not really be comfortable and it's a good lesson for everybody i think chase Irvin is one of my favorite cinematographers um in the industry and that was really the most satisfying aspect of blonde in my opinion was really the cinematography of it the cinematography wasn't as smooth as it is and just satisfying i would have been made even more anxious and I would have felt even more uncomfortable. But that's just what they chose to focus on in this film. And that's my main criticism of Netflix as a platform, is that it's 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 kind of exploitative. But, you know, that that's a conversation for another day. I would give Blonde a, at least a 6.5 out of 10, probably a 7 out of 10. It's worth your time. It's pretty long. You know, it's over 2.5 hours. So buckle in and get ready for the tragedy that a lot of her life was. You know, and and really have empathy for her. And congratulations to Anna for a tremendous job. And we'll see what Andrew Dominic does next. But check out Blonde, and I hope you like it as much as I did. Thanks so much for checking us out this week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Book Cast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Book Cast. You can also find me on Twitter at C Banksy, S E E Banksy. I'm also on Instagram at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section. It really helps people discover our podcast. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag Film Film book cast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the Film Book Cast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.